you definitely want to get the basis if you can. Um, cause like you said before, when you have the 1031 exchange, when you do a 1031, you're carrying forward, long story short, you're carrying forward the basis from the original property plus or minus some items, and you're not getting that full, uh, the full depreciable value of that new purchase, if you want to put it that way. So being able to have an, uh, that full depreciation basis when it comes to real estate is, is certainly key. So what are your thoughts on A, the traditional installment sale with businesses, like I just said, and then B, uh, what are your thoughts on the deferred sales trust? So, yeah, so the traditional installment sale, certainly it is certainly limited. Like you said, there are, there are certainly uses for it and places where it makes sense and where it doesn't make sense. And then uh, as for the deferred sales trust, it's something that we have had some clients explore. And it's if you and your advisors are, are, are all informed on how it works and you're able to operate it, it's certainly an option to consider. So I, I really don't have a strong opinion on it either way. It's just another tool in the tool belt uh, for investors to particularly use if it works for them. Excellent. So now what about the ability to, I don't know if you know this, but you can get a, a new depreciation schedule um, by partnering with the trust. So uh, to me, what, what I love about buying investment real estate and doing the lazy 1031, Thomas, is you're getting a new depreciation schedule for that new property you bought. Your 1031 is not traveling with your old depreciation schedule, right? Or your old right. depreciation shows that travel. So, so one of it, we call it tax flow, right? To maximize tax flow, you want to maximize depreciation with cost seg, with bonus depreciation, but also with the full fresh depreciation schedule. I have a client, his, his name's Harry, and I sold his apartment complex in Sacramento. And he has a second apartment complex that he's owned for over 30 years. And as you know, multifamily is 27 and a half years, fully depreciated. I said, Harry, why don't you sell? He goes, Brett, I don't have anything to 1031 into. In full honesty, I, you know, the profit's not accepting his hometown. I'm still trying to convince him to use the deferred sales trust, but he's had this property for years. It was passed on from his dad, like, you know, 40 plus years back before and all this stuff. And I said, Harry, here's the problem. You have about $600,000 of income every year. You have no depreciation. So you're getting crushed with tax on that. I said, if you do a 1031 anyways, even if I found you the perfect deal, the biggest challenge becomes you're going to have to, um, have an old depreciation schedule. And so I said, what about this? We sell the asset, we find a buyer for 10 million. We defer all of your capital gains tax into the deferred sales trust. You do an installment sale, you're, mar you're married, so you can do traditional installment sale with the DST, but then you can partner with the trust. So watch this, watch this, Thomas. He can form a brand new LLC and think of it kind of like a syndication or a partnership, JV LLC. It's more like a JV LLC. And the trust can fund this LLC, but he's the managing member of the LLC. Okay. Yeah. And they can go, he can go buy real estate at any time with the fresh depreciation schedule. Yeah. Okay. And so he's got a promissory note for 10 million, typically at, uh, you know, six, seven, eight, nine percent And then he's joint venture partnered and the part of the 10 million, all tax deferred can go into this LLC and he can go buy real estate, go buy businesses, go, go build real estate. So we've done this with Shea Pope. He sold a, a 3 million, basically about a, a couple million dollar business. And he started to develop a couple million dollar multifamily complex in Tennessee. We did it with a client who exited cryptocurrency. Uh, she bought crypto for about 50,000 and went to 50 million. And we exited 5 million of it, deferred the tax and just use it for startup capital. So that concept, had you heard of that before? And does that change any, any thoughts on what the DST is and what it can do? Yeah, no, no, I definitely understand how the DST works. And I think it, it can be a powerful solution if, if used properly and in the right context. Uh, especially when it comes to real estate, you definitely want to get that. You definitely want to get the basis if you can. Um, cause like you said before, when you have the 1031 exchange, when you do a 1031, you're carrying forward, long story short, you're carrying forward the basis from the original property plus or minus some items. And you're not getting that full, uh, the full depreciable value of that new purchase, if you want to put it that way. So being able to have an, uh, that full depreciation basis when it comes to real estate is, is certainly key. And like I said, you know, there's the tool is definitely a powerful tool. If, if it, if it makes sense for the person and what they have going on.